Hello, everyone, wherever you may be around the world. My name is A.K. Ikwakor. I'm a 2007 Oregon alum, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the second part of our conversation. And now the Lundquist College of Business is re-envisioning business education and is setting students up for success. Now, in our first part of our discussion, we'll talk in depth about flight school and how the business academic residential community, otherwise nine, eh, sorry about that, otherwise known as BizArc, was what we talked about last week. And in today's episode, we're going to continue our discussion with the Associate Dean of Advising and Student Experience, Colette Nyland, who is going to expand on the Professional Edge program and how it's really designed to help students develop cutting edge skills essential in this modern job market. Now, unfortunately, Josh Gordon will not be able to attend or join us today. So Colette is going to talk about the Oregon Consulting Group, also known as OCG. Now I'm super excited about this because OCG is this professionally managed student run student organization really housed in the Lundquist College of Business. And today we also have some exceptional students joining Colette in a little later to give their insight on their experience being a part of this unique program for students. But first, let's actually introduce once again to the stage, Colette Nyland. How are you today? I'm well, AK. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. I just want to say it's just been a pleasure to talk to you the first time. And I know you're involved in a lot of, of amazing programs. But just in case for anyone that was not able to meet you the first time, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what brought you to the U of L. Yeah, no. Uh, so I, I, I'm sort of this uh, itinerant program builder. I, I go around the country uh, trying to build transformative student experiences. Uh, so, uh, you know, had great opportunity to work at the University of Wisconsin, uh, UCLA, University of Illinois, and, and now here. And, and what really brought me here was just the epic scale of what they were trying to do. Um, you know, really trying to build an entire ecosystem around applied learning. And, and so for me, the, the, the chance to be able to build something of that size uh, was very attractive. Okay. So tell us a little about what is, you know, the, what are some programs? I know you're involved in a lot of different programs, but just can you just give a little bit of an overview of some of the programs that are really designed for student success. Yeah, yeah. Program. You know, so, it, you know, fundamentally what we're trying to do is, is change the way in which students learn. Um, I, I think, you know, in the past, it's been very focused on the piece of per paper at the end, very focused on meeting checkpoints and jumping through hurdles. And, and we really wanted to, to get them to understand that, you know, what they're building are, you know, skills and competencies that they can use to wrestle with really intractable problems, right? And so the, in order for them to, to do that, um, we really wanted to start from the moment they arrived, um, which is why we built um, BizArc, which is the largest academic residential community at the university, um, and um, uh, uh, and why we're launch we did a pilot test of flight school and are launching that next year, which is our first year integrated experience um, for students that are in flight school, um, and to really sort of start them off thinking about those skills and competencies, thinking about creativity and innovation and how important that's going to be going forward. You know, it's funny, there's, there's, there's a, a great phrase about how change has never been so fast and will never be so slow again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and so part of this is really about understanding the speed of change and integrating that into the student experience so that we can build programming all along the way. The other piece is really focused on, you know, work integrated learning, uh, which is why I'm so excited to talk a little bit about um, later about the Oregon Consulting Group, you know, the ability to wrestle with a live problem brought to us by, by a company and produce a professional deliverable, that's an experience that you can't really replicate um, uh, in, in a classroom setting. It, um, and so the ability to build programs like that um, are really important. And then, you know, as we get into the professional edge, you know, that really is about embracing the fact that, um, you know, there may be skills and competencies that weren't even imagined when students began with us, 
that are critically important to them when they leave and are what companies are looking for. Um, and so, um, you know, that, that sort of gives you some of the, some components. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, just tell them, let's talk a little bit more, like what is Professional Edge? What is that program? Dive a little bit into that. Yeah, yeah. And and so it's important to talk about the fact that it's it's now in a, in a, in a stage of reimagining. Uh, we, you know, we did a soft pilot of it you know, offering um, short courses and things like Google Analytics and design thinking. Um, but now we're, we're reimagining that in a, in a much broader um, footprint. Um, you know, in the past, it was primarily face-to-face. -face. Now it'll, it will have both face-to-face -face components um, and digital components, in, in part because we also want to make sure that the platform is porous. Um, uh, to the outside. So it's not just for current students. It's not just for current business students. It's for the entire campus, but it's also for alumni who uh, want to upskill or retool, um, it, it, for community members who, who want to um, uh, make themselves career ready. Um, and so um, there's lots of different components of that. And really thinking about these short courses with industry in mind. So in, instead of it being the, in the language of academia, it's in the language of industry and really thinking about uh, competencies and skills that translate um, to what um, our alumni and employers are telling us they need. But you, you use this word short courses. Like I understand term long courses. I yeah. understand like a workshop, but what is a short course. Yeah, so a short course is a one to two hour, well, it, it can be just one, uh, one one to two hour iteration, or it might be a series of one to two hour iterations that add up to a competency or a skill set. Um, you know, so, it, you know, it could be around data visualization, it could be around fintech, um, it could be just a basic, you know, intro to, to, uh, to Excel. Um, and, uh, um, and the idea is also that they're, that they're potentially stackable, right? So that you might have a student who's stacking, you know, Excel for beginners with um, Excel for finance or Excel for accounting. Yeah. Um, and they could be innovative in the way that they stack. Um, and, and so it's, it's really an opportunity to decide, oh, here's what I want in my toolbox. You know, I want Google Analytics. And I want data visualization, and and maybe I also want something in in fintech, and really to think of, be creative about those combinations. Well, as we know, we said the world's moving so fast, innovation is moving so fast. Who is developing this content to make sure it's, you know, the most relevant, and also, you know, how is it being delivered? Yeah, yeah, and and so what's great about this is 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 that there are a lot of creators. You know, the, the goal is for this to be, there be a lot of co-creation going on between us and industry uh, um, and, and faculty uh, being part of the co-creation. Um, so the idea is to really make sure that we're responding um, and shaping these uh, micro-credentials in a way um, that, um, really resonates with, with companies. And so co-creation is a really important part of this um, um, and will be a part of all that we develop in that, in that program. Well, I know that you know, University of Oregon has a tremendous business program, right? Business school program for the MBA programs. So how is that being interwoven into <laughs> the business school, especially if it's for undergraduate students? Like what's the difference between a business class in some of these classes. Yeah. And, you know, and what's so great about the, about the fact that we're doing this as an ecosystem is the fact that there's a dialogue or a relationship going on between everything that we do. And so there'll be, there's a relationship between what will be in the professional edge program and what's happening in the classroom. So to give you an example, you know, uh, let's say you're, you're taking um, our, our leadership and communications course. Every student takes it. And it's a profound course in and of itself. But uh, you know, for example, if a faculty member says we're going to be using Microsoft Teams in this course, and you know, it would behoove you to go and and uh, uh, take the Microsoft Teams short course, and you'll you'll be more effective in this class. So not only is that propelling academic success, but it's also a skill that they can articulate to employers. Um, you know, and so we're we're sort of um, killing two birds with one stone there. The other type of dialogue. Um, 
can be around that you've touched on a particular subject. Let's say, you know, you touched on alternative investments in a course, but then you take a short course in cryptocurrency. You know, the ability to sort of deep dive into subjects that have been broached um, during your academic curriculum is, is, I think, so important. You know, it, it, there's, you know, we talk about long and broad when we talk about degree programs. With short courses, what we're talking about is short and narrowly defined. You know, um, getting to the granular level in terms of particular skills and competencies um, and being able to, to dive deeply into the, those things, which I think is pretty exciting. Well, it sounds exciting. So for these students that are taking these courses and wanting to set themselves apart, do they receive any type of credentials? And if not, or if so, how are they leveraging these courses? Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's, you know, it's one of the, it, it's interesting. In the past, um, you know, the, the area, the micro credentials have been a little bit of the wild west, mm -hmm. um, but it's starting to mature. Um, and, and so, you know, what we're examining is, is how do we produce credentials that have the kind of metadata behind them that will tell an employer exactly what a student has achieved, uh, uh, um, having earned that micro credential. And I think um, for us, what's what's great about the Oregon brand is, you know, the ability for an employer to trust that that micro credential, uh, micro credential has real worth because it's being offered by the Lundquist College of Business, and there's an assessment component connected to us, and so. Um, you know, the, you know, the belief is, is that um, they'll come out of that with confidence, students will come out of it with confidence that they've mastered it. Um, and companies can have the confidence that they have the skill set attached to that micro credential. Um, and, and so um, that's going to be a really important part of the design. Well, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts. It sounds like there's a lot of stakeholders to make sure this is the most relevant and the most impactful for students, but who are some of the stakeholders involved to really help expand this program? Yeah, well, it, well, it, interesting. There's, it, you know, uh, one of the stakeholders involved is, is the student, um, and and so it, um, we're going to talk about Oregon Consulting Group in a minute. But the fact that that one of the deliverables, one of the projects that we had them work on, was to really think about um, how how professional ed should should um, how it should enter the market, and also what are the formats that are going to work well um, for different student personas. And so we've really designed it uh, in part with them in mind, and also in part um, with their interest in terms of the type of content in mind. Um, you know, other stakeholders are obviously faculty, uh, making sure that that dialogue is going on back and forth between courses and what we're doing. Um, and, and, you know, so it's that's sort of one and one make three kind of uh, relationship, right? Um, and, and then to really think about um, how we can respond um, to industry. I, one of the conversations that I'm having later today, in fact, uh, is with our alumni association in Portland, because they're looking to see, you know, how can um, we sort of um, co-create on, um, uh, at least that's what I'm hoping they're, they're looking to see, is how we can co-create content that will be useful for our young alumni, right? Who, are, who know right away um, that even though they've, they've just recently graduated, the need to be able to, um, to retool and upskill throughout their career begins the moment they arrive in their new position. Well, uh, you know, just, just thinking about it, um, when you're talking about industry, I hear there's relationships and stakeholders within the University of Oregon. But how far out are some of these industry partners? Are they statewide or even are some of these partners even across the globe? Well, and that's that's one of the pieces that we're building out as we speak. Um, so this is part of the reimagining um, is to really think about, um, you know, what are some of the companies that we can start to create partnerships with, um, not just in terms of the professional edge, but in terms of other work integrated experiences. So, you know, there, there's a number of companies that we work with regularly and, and I, um, those are the ones I think that we'll target first uh, in terms of who are some of our largest employers. Um, and I think you could probably identify who some of those are uh, in the state of Oregon. Um, and then how, how can we connect with them um, uh, on, um, 
the design of the curriculum. You know, in the past, you know, we've had outreach from companies on things like, you know, can you have a social selling course and can you create that for us? You know, um, how can you um, create some content around, um, uh, you know, uh, effective uh, communication for social media and things like that. So those are the types of content that come from those partnerships. And I guess even when you think about partnerships and getting more people involved, how can someone like me, an alumni, help support the Professional Edge program? Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, um, you can reach out to me for one. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, I'll be leading the charge in terms of, uh, of how this program gets built out. Um, and it's why where I'm also meeting with, with um, groups like um, the Alumni Association um, uh, to sort of get that feedback. But, um, you know, I, I love to ideate with people and, and uh, I, you know, any ideas that, that come to you, I'd love to chat about that. So um, I don't know if, uh, if someone could put my contact information in the chat, uh, but, uh, um, you know, we're, we're gonna uh, start to build out um, uh, outreach to a variety of groups, but I, I'm uh, happy to uh, get feedback from anyone uh, um, uh, in terms of what they can bring to the table. Well, I mean, I think what we have is we were talking earlier about just how a lot of these programs at the University of Oregon are co-curricular. You're having students really being a part of the process. So first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for talking a lot about the Professional Edge program and how it's really impacting students to give them those skills that they really need for success. But there's also a second group yes. um, program, and that's the OCG. Oregon Consulting Group. Like, what is that? Tell me a little bit more about the Oregon Consulting Group. Okay, and, and, and so let me start off by saying two things. One, um, it's not true that I told Josh Gordon the wrong date, so I was allowed to talk about it rather than him. Uh, two, uh, don't tell the other programs, but it is it is my favorite program uh, that we built so far. Um, and once you meet the students, you'll understand why. Um, but this is just a fantastic example of work integrated learning. Um, the idea that, um, I mean, it's really an audacious idea to decide that you can build a professional consultancy where companies will pay us for deliverables using undergraduates um, uh, and, and, and have a program that is virtually self-sustaining um, from that revenue. And to have students who are sometimes in this program for as much as three years, um, and then can come out having worked on, you know, project after project after project, um, you know, and articulate those um, uh, those experiences to employers and accelerate their careers. Um, so, you know, for me, this program ticks all the boxes. Uh, you know, in terms of student experience, but also in terms of the students own this. They were, they were uh, part of the initial impetus to create it. Um, they helped build it. They are the ones responsible for making sure that the deliverable is there. Um, and the fact that they'll commit 10 hours a week on top of all of the other demands that they have is tremendous. Um, and it, what it tells me is, we got the value proposition for this program just right. Well, I mean, I would have to agree. I've had a conversation with some of the students and I'm actually excited to bring two of these, I'll say it, undergrad students <laughs> that are making and working with these industry leaders to help develop amazing projects to help these companies grow. So I would like to first introduce um, Callum Quo, a senior and also Nelly Pullis. Um, onto the stage just to talk about their experience and the work that they're doing within the Oregon Consulting Group. But first, let me start with you, Nelly. Um, tell us like what got you into the Oregon Consulting Group? And I think everybody's ears perked up as they're wondering like, what type of projects are you working on? Yeah, so I got involved my sophomore year. Um, I'd, I'd come in, I'd gone through all of the pre-business classes, you know, those, those generally pretty large lecture based classes. And I was kind of really missing that element of a group of people who really wanted to do really good work and, and do meaningful work um, in the community. And 
it was, I saw a little notice on one of the TVs in Lilith for an info session for the consulting group. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go see what it's like. And I met all of the people that were there and it just seemed so amazing. Everyone was so engaged and enthusiastic about the work that they were doing. They all seemed like they were great friends. And I thought this is the community I've been looking for. This is something that I wanna be a part of. Um, and so I applied and luckily was able to get in and participate, um, which, which was really nice. Um, in, in terms of kind of what types of projects we do, we do all sorts. Uh, we're a management consulting based firm. Um, so we, we do focus more on kind of general strategic goals, um, organization ideas or ideals, um, structure, that kind of stuff. But we have also worked on financial analysis projects and, and brand positioning projects, stuff like that. We really do a, a wide range, for sure. It sounds like obviously a, a wide range of activities that you're part of and real world skills. And I know some students are saying, how can I get involved in this program? So Callum, tell me a little bit about what is your journey about how, what got you into it and how students can actually get involved. Yeah, of course. And you know, thank you for having us today, AK. I also want to apologize in advance. My neighbors have unilaterally decided today is home improvement day. So if there's any noise in the background, I apologize. Um, but I personally got involved um, at the end of my freshman year. Uh, I had entered the University of Oregon studying business and biology. And I thought the Oregon Consulting Group was going to be a really fantastic way to learn structural skills and then also bring in this context of knowledge I've learned in the STEM field in a really fascinating way to be able to work on problems that excite me. And so that is why I ended up applying. What I found since I've been in the group for almost three years or just a little over three years now is that people tend to come to us for you know one of three reasons. The first is kind of this academic inclination. Those people that are sitting in their classrooms and they feel that the classroom environment isn't what makes them come alive and understand how to use the tools that they're learning. So we'll have people come to us for this application-based purpose. But I would say the other two, one is this idea of people who love to be challenged and are looking for a community of people that are gonna push them to develop them further. And finally, those who are looking for career acceleration and are interested in being more prepared as they enter the workforce. Um, and so students, once they recognize, you know, one of those three features in themselves, they'll approach us in either fall or spring for our formal recruitment cycle. And we've tried to model our recruitment cycle off of, you know, pretty formal practices that you'd see in the consulting world, <clears throat> excuse me. And so that'll consist of one part of behavioral interview and then one part a case interview. We design these to be rigorous so we can understand a student's you know, natural abilities in terms of communicating, being coachable, taking feedback, but also making sure they're a cultural fit. And if all that thing, if all those things come together, we, you know, we admit them to the group and they join this really vibrant community of 35 standing members at any given time, but also a growing alumni network of approximately 100 alumni at this time. So yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds, especially for an undergrad, they need to have very different of experiences. So if I'm a parent or a student watching, you know, Colette, as you've probably seen a myriad of different applications and backgrounds coming in, what makes a successful OCG applicant or even say consultant? Yeah, no, no, no. You know, it, it's, I think it's, it's an openness to challenging themselves. Um, an openness to, to know what they don't know, right? Because this really is an opportunity to learn. Um, and, and so there's a, there's a curiosity to this. Um, I think the ability to, to pivot um, uh, and to be adaptable, I, I think, um, and, and, and Callum and Nellie, Nellie can tell me if I'm wrong, but you know, of the projects I've observed, you know, there's usually a pivot point partway through the project where you're like, oh God, <laughs> you know, that didn't go the way I intended at all. Um, and the, the ability then to say, okay, well, so that, that initial approach didn't work. How do we pivot to something else? Or how do we try something else? Or how do we reframe this? And the ability to do that is really important. So I, I do think that there's, there's an adaptability, an ability to deal with ambiguity, 
um, openness um, that, that are really critically important. And, and then um, I think, um, you know, as you go along, um, you know, as people uh, progress through the program, it, it also becomes about how do you manage people um, to truly um, leverage their skills, energize a team. Um, and so there's a lot of emotional intelligence that's important to this program as well, especially as people progress um, through the ranks. I mean, for, for Nelly, there's, it sounds like it's a, it is a business school, Lundquist Business School program, but what kind of skills do students need to have? Are there students outside of the business school that are also involved as consultants for the OCG? Yeah, definitely. We have students from all different majors come to the OCG to work. And, and that's one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is having this kind of diversity of viewpoint in the projects that we take on and in the um, groups and project teams that we create. Um, I, I would definitely say, kind of going off of what Colette was saying, one of the things that we really value is this drive to learn and, and students who are really eager to learn new things and try new things and are, are willing to pivot when, when we do run into problems um, and, and are really enthusiastic about the work that we're doing. I would definitely say those are, those are the big, big targets that we wanna hit. Well, I mean, they're, they're big targets and it also sounds like a really big responsibility because you're working with you know, companies that are looking to scale, that grow, that have employees, that have to feed their families, and you're working on strategy. So Callum, how do students prepare for such an opportunity to work with these companies to help them grow and scale? Yeah, no, of course. And I think, you know, that is kind of a two-way street. On one hand, when we look at our student applicants, it is as, you know, folks have mentioned already, you know, we are looking for a set of structural skills and attributes that are going to make someone effective on a team, able to work with a client, communicate well and collaborate. Um, but on, as an organization, in terms of preparing undergraduate students, you know, we rely heavily on, on training. So when a student is admitted to our organization, you know, we take them through, you know, rigorous weekend sessions in which, you know, they'll sit with us for two hours. And, you know, we believe that if they came in with the right attitude, and again, these structural components, that we can teach them the hard skills that they might need on a project. So you know, when it comes to, you know, we're doing a seminar series on frameworks like SWAP, Borders by Forces, things that they'll learn in the classroom, but we really want to enhance those skills and make sure that they're going to be ready to apply them on a project. And so, you know, it's a component of training, but then also ensuring our recruitment process is looking for the right applicant and the right member um, to help us contribute to projects. And, and this is just for, for, for you, Callum, and also you, Nelly. Bring yourself back to your journey as you've gone through this program, not only in the classroom, but also working with companies. How has being a part of OCG helped shape your college career, your college experience? Yeah, so, you know, I can go ahead and jump in and say that this has been, you know, the most important experience I have. When I look at my, you know, incredible experience as a doc and a U of O student, I will look back and say it is primarily characterized by my involvement with OCG. Um, again, I joined OCG off of this assumption that I would be coming here to challenge myself to learn and to grow and develop, but I never would have imagined in the beginning that I would also be joining you know, this vibrant community of people that you know, all my long-term friends now and then after college are going to be from this group. And that is something so fantastic about this organization, how we can bring people together around challenging problems and you can build those you know, lasting bonds. Nice. And then same question to you, Nelly. Yeah, I mean, I reiterate everything, Callum, <laughs> but I, I think that the social element is definitely one of the most valuable because it is such a fun group to be a part of and, and it, you really do enjoy working on these really tough problems. Um, but even professionally, this group has really helped me figure out what I want to do. Um, I changed my major because of a project that I did in that group. I started as sports business. I came in, that's what I wanted to do. And then I did a kind of financial analysis project. And I was like, you know what? I really like accounting. I think I'm going to do accounting instead. <laughs> um, and so it, it definitely helped me kind of figure that out for myself um, and, and really enabled me to see what these industries actually look like. And, and where I would want to go. 
Thank you. And, and, and Colette, just a question. I'm sure that companies or alumni or individuals that are listening in are interested, like how can we submit a, you know, a proposal to OCG? So what does that process look like? And how do you choose one project over another? Oh, well, and I may, I may defer to, to them on, on parts of this too, uh, uh, you know, but we have it, there, there's a couple of ways to, to connect with us. It, you know, there, there is, uh, you can go to the OCG website um, and you can submit a project proposal. Um, you, can, you can reach out uh, to the organization. You can reach out to Josh Gordon. Uh, you could reach out to Callum. I, I, um, the, the students are very involved in every aspect of this. So it, it, even to the point of business development and scoping out uh, projects. Um, uh, and, and Callum can speak a little bit more to this as well. Yeah, so we recently actually built out a business development arm as our organization. In part, as Colette mentioned, to continue to add more to the student experience and build out skills in a new way that might not have necessarily been accessible to them beforehand. So as soon as you submit a project proposal, either through our website or you email Josh Gordon, if we figure it's, a, it's gonna be a good fit for us, um, a team of students are essentially gonna sit down with you and scope a project, figure out what we can accomplish in a 10 week timeline as for what you want. And we look for primarily alignment between your organizational goals as well as what this project can teach students and how it can enhance their skills. And then Nelly, how long are these programs or how long are these proposals or, or the contract? Yeah, so our business development team will spend a couple weeks to a month working with the client to finalize that statement of work um, and kind of figure out what exactly they want OCG to do. And then we work on a 10 week timeline. So we really act, kind of operate in line with the academic calendar, um, 10 week term, 10 week project. Um, and we really follow that timeline for every client. Every once in a while, a client will have a ton more ideas and so we'll work with them multiple terms in a row. Um, but every every individual engagement is a 10 week time frame. And you know, what and, does it? Oh, oh and AK, I just want to add to this. I, I mean, it's an extraordinary bargain for the client, you know, because, um, you know, for something that, you know, for the fraction of a cost of an intern, um, you know, $5,000 for, for a project, you get an entire team um, with great experience producing a deliverable that you would pay five times as much for, um, sometimes 10 times as much for at the end uh, and, and have it after a 10 week period, which is extraordinary. Um, so, you know, for, for all of the, those of you out there who have something in your back pocket, um, this is the deal of the century uh, in terms of uh, of uh, uh, of what you get. Well, how many how many projects do you select a term, usually on average? So, yeah, Cal, do you want to fill that? Yeah, no, I can certainly go ahead and take that. Um, so, we we try to sync up the number of projects we take with our recruiting cycles. So, as we end our spring term and head into summer, of course, we're going to have a lot of graduating seniors that we're going to want to send off into the workforce and they won't be returning to the University of Oregon. So, entering fall term, we'll typically slate four projects. However, for winter and spring, once we've bulked up from that recruiting cycle, we'll be prepared to take on typically five to six for each of those terms. And also, just to add on to what Colette had mentioned, you know, not only is it a value in the sense of the amount of manpower and really highly committed students that you're getting on this project, but I also want to call attention to this idea of, you know, academic institutions being a powerhouse in terms of we rely on faculty expertise. You know, we'll frequently reach out to uh, faculty or professors at the business school or even outside. I remember I had one project for a public utility. And they were extremely curious um, about how potentially the big Cascadia fault line and earthquake, you know, it's going to affect uh, their disaster preparedness. So I waltzed over with Nellie to the Department of Volcanology, found a professor there and got some really great information from them. So I want to highlight part of our value is also faculty expertise. In addition to the institutional database licenses, we have access to Mergent, PitchBook, um, and these are just a few that help us really evaluate other companies in the landscape. And, you know, those are really fantastic tools that we bring to a project. I mean, obviously, just having that particular experience, I'm sure, is, is valuable. How are you leveraging this? You're both seniors. And how do you see yourself using this experience, you know, post-graduation? 
Yeah. You know, now I'll, I'll turn it over to, to you, but I, I did want to add, you know, my entire professional experience, and this is not unique um, to me, it is all members of OCG. You take a look at their resume, the top thing they're going to have on their resume is their experience with this organization. And I can safely say, you know, I started my career, my internship career, I should say, at Kaiser Permanente. Uh, I parlayed that experience um, out of what I had learned at OCG. And then eventually took it to uh, Amgen, a global biotechnology company in Southern California, where you know I was really competing against uh, an intense applicant pool from schools all across the nation, undergraduates. And I was able to get not only a spot, but a return offer because of the skills I learned in OCG and then brought to the role at Amgen. And so, you know, again, I don't think this is particularly a unique experience to me, but now I can go ahead and comment. Yeah, no, I, I, OCG has been probably the most in, valuable interview tool that I've been able to pull out. Um, I, am, I also used OCG top header for all, all resumes I've ever submitted. Um, I, I distinctly remember I'm interning at KPMG this summer, but I also applied to their um, MATA program, which is essentially they will sponsor me to go to graduate school to get um, a master's in accounting. And during my interview, I, I actually apologized to my recruiter because I, I know during, whenever I went to more career services, they were like, try show a diversity of experience. Don't take all examples from the same place. And I apologized to my interview. I'm saying, I'm sorry. I know all of my examples are from OCG, but it's a really great opportunity. And, and the interviewer looked at me and she was like, this sounds amazing. Don't apologize. <laughs> like, this is great. Um, and so it, it it really has been valuable in that sense. And, and even going beyond that next year, going into a graduate program and beyond that, I'm going into, I'm an audit intern this summer. I'll be an audit associate at KPMG after the grad program and knowing how to work on a team, knowing how to navigate situations with a client, I, it's going to be invaluable um, to that experience and getting used to that working environment. Yeah, and, and, and to Callum, it sounds like there's, to confirm you, there's 35 individuals working on each project. How were students selected for each project? Is it self-selected or is there a committee that decides who's going to work on each project? Great question. So actually a little bit of both. So once we have our slate of clients for a term, approximately two weeks before the start of that term, we send out an interest survey to everyone in the group and they get to rank choice which projects they would like to work on. And why that's really important to our processes it is to make sure, and they get a little snippet of what the scope is going to be. And that's really important to our processes to make sure that students are A, gonna be committed involved because they're passionate about the project they're working on. And then B, they believe that they have the right skills to add value there. And so once we have all that information put together, you know, we sit down as a management team and we work with the project managers to build a team composition that's going to work effectively on that project. For example, you know, we just ordered uh, disc licenses. So you know, it's kind of in that same category of you know, move past Myers-Briggs, but kind of in the same category of behavioral assessment and understanding how people work in teams, what are their preferred styles of acting on, uh, in those collaborative situations. And we try and make up teams that are going to complement each other well and then work effectively on the project. Well, and as you're working collectively on the project, you know, obviously we want to make sure you want to make sure that you're providing the most value for these companies. What has been some of the feedback from some of the companies you've worked with? Yeah, so, you know, I think it's been overwhelmingly positive. Our value proposition is transformative experience for students, exceptional value for clients. And how we, you know, live out and, and execute that latter piece has to do, A, bringing in the institutional resources I mentioned. So not only are you having more creative minds on a project, so typically four consultants, one project manager and one senior manager to your project, but you also have, you know, faculty review and resources as well as, you know, institutional databases to, uh, to kind of back you up there. And so, you know, the feedback we always get is, is frankly a surprise um, because on one hand, you know, we have clients come into meetings um, and they expect a, a caliber of work and we often, you know, blow right past it um, because we train for those particular attributes and qualities, uh, but also because these students want to demonstrate their value. 
And so it's always been, you know, wow, this was, this was a bargain. Well, I mean, to Nelly, we always expect those situations that always exceeding clients expectations. Has there ever been a situation where you have to maybe potentially give negative news to a, a company or maybe handling, you know, difficult feedback? Nelly, any experience in, in that realm? So every once in a while, um, I remember it was one of my very earliest projects that I worked with OCG on. We did have a client who came in with these really grand ideas of what they wanted to do. And, and our job at that term was to figure out, okay, how do we get there? What, what, what steps do they need to take? And the client came in expecting us to say, you just got to do this one thing and then you're good to go. Go ahead and execute on all these wonderful plans that you have. And unfortunately we discovered, oh no, there, there are gonna be a lot of steps that you gotta take until you can get to that point. And it is kind of hard to give that feedback, especially since it was one of my earliest projects, it was very nerve wracking for me to be like, no, you can't do that. Cause I, I wasn't as comfortable in the space, but it really does take the recognition that we're the experts on what they've asked us to do. We are the ones that went and we did all of this research. We have all this evidence to give to them. And it's tough sometimes, but clients really appreciate knowing what they need to do and, and hearing what they need to hear in order to get to where they want to go. Thank you. And I hear, oh, continue coming. Oh yeah, I just wanted to add on to that and just really emphasize this idea that, you know, we are a data-driven organization, you know, clients will typically come in as with anybody in one of these situations with assumptions or hypotheses about a problem. And our goal is to form outside of policy, hypotheses and then go in to test that with primary or secondary research. And so when we reach an impasse with a client who believes their assumptions to be true, we simply point and look at the data and say, you know, that has shown to be inaccurate. And when regardless of our age, our degrees, you know, we can always fall back and say, this is where the data is leading us. And, you know, we believe it's to be correct. So that's, you know, what we always fall back on. Yeah, and just, uh, just a few more questions as I'm, as I'm thinking about it. Is it sounds, I'm hearing a lot of business terms. I'm hearing SWOT analysis, you know, competitive advantage. Now for Colette, how one does the MBA program fit into all of this? Because the MBA program is one of the top in the country, and is this only for business students to apply? Yeah, no, the, the, the program is, was designed to be accessible to the entire campus, uh, you know, for some of the reasons that Nellie pointed out earlier, you know, bringing in those, those different frames are so important um, to be able to handle uh, a lot of the projects that, that OCG does. Um, and, and even though OCG was, was designed um, with undergraduates in mind, um, recently, um, because uh, honestly, MBAs and, and other graduate students have kind of clamored. I mean, the, 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 the story is out about what a great experience this is. And so, um, so we've um, pilot tested uh, allowing um, uh, some students to participate and it's gone well. Um, but, you know, with the understanding, and as you can tell um, from Callum and Nelly, is, you know, this is a meritocracy. Um, and so, you know, anyone who comes in, they, they're coming in as a, as, as a starting consultant. If they've got the skills, great. Um, but, but uh, you know, we base it on, on what people bring to the, to the table in terms of uh, who leads these, these projects. Well, I mean, to, to Nelly, I mean, we're talking about it's your senior year. There's a lot of work that's happening. How do students manage school, hobbies, and OCG all in their schedule? Yeah, it, it can get difficult. Um, I, <laughs> but like Colette alluded to a little earlier in the session, we, we advertise it's a 10 week, 10 hour per week um, commitment for every term. And, and yeah, it, it can get hectic, but honestly the work that we do and the time that we spend together as a group, it's just so much fun. Like I don't feel like I'm spending 10 hours a week on OCG, I feel like I'm spending five hours a week doing work and then five hours like hanging out with friends and doing some really cool um, projects. Um, and, and the commitment does vary kind of depending on the role that you've taken on in the group. A consultant is that 10 hours, project managers expect a little more time. 
senior managers, the executive leadership team a little bit more. Um, but again, it's it's all worth it. Um, it's and, and I get that question a lot from students when they come up to our well when they used to come up to our table in the list during recruitment times. Um, how how do you balance it? How can you make it all work? And I, my response is always just like it doesn't feel like it. You're just having so much fun. It doesn't feel like you're stressing about getting work done. Yeah, and I just want to say you know just Callum and you no, know, I just want to say thank you for sharing your experience within the program. You're a very impressive individual. So I know you're gonna have a, a lot of, of options, um, but just final question to both of you. If you're talking, looking at that student that's saying like, uh, should I apply or should I not? Should I be a part of it? What suggestions, what advice would you give them about their process on whether or not they should apply or not? I mean, first thing I would always say to them is, you know, reflect on the experiences you've already had, you know, for a lot of our members that come to us at the beginning of their sophomore year or mid junior year, and it's to reflect on the experiences they've already had, evaluating those, and then looking for, again, this kind of three reasons that I mentioned for, for why you might join this organization. If you're seeking out a, a community that's going to continue to challenge you to grow, if, you know, you're looking for a path forward to accelerate your career and make you more competitive in the job pool, or if you're looking to apply the things that you've learned in the classroom in, in an application manner and you feel that you haven't been coming alive in that situation. And so if any of those sound like you, it's always great to just you know shoot us an email and sit down with one of us and then kind of talk through it. You, and off to you, Nelly. Yeah, I mean, my advice is always to try it. I, I, I will never tell anyone to shy away from taking advantage of the opportunities that the LCB presents. I'm, I was nervous applying and the, it was the best decision that I've probably ever made <laughs> to apply to the OCG and, and really dive into it kind of full force. Um, yeah. Just, <laughs> say just do it. Just do it. Just, so, exactly. just do it. As someone that we think says, I'm just trying to think about who says that. Um, <laughs> but Callum, uh, now I just want to say thank you for taking the time and um, I look forward to just watching you on your, your, your journey and also the impact you're making with OCG. Thank you very much. And then to, to Colette, the one final question to you, actually two final questions is, you know, as alumni, there's a lot of amazing programs that are happening within the University of Oregon. How can us as alumni help support OCG? Oh, yes. No, well, I, I think one is, is to, can, you know, for those of you who, who may have projects, uh, you know, obviously uh, taking advantage, um, you know, of the services that they provide. Two, I, I think as, as you can see, um, you know, the ability to um, offer a job to such exceptional candidates. I mean, I mean, the placement rate out of this program is astonishing, as you can see. Um, but, uh, but, you know, but understanding the, the kind of um, quality candidates that they're creating. Um, two, you know, we still have, you know, one of the things that, that um, you know, even donating uh, uh, towards these programs, I think one of the things about OCG is, you know, given the time commitment, you know, we have some students who not only do OCG, but then also have to work on the side. And, and so, you know, any scholarships that go towards helping students to be able to focus on experiences like this are, are, are really helpful. Same, same thing with the Professional Edge program, you know, as we start to launch that, you know, donations that help us to, to, um, to fund that program. Um, are, are, are really important part of that. So, and, and just your uh, um, expertise. Um, as you know, as we're building out these programs, um, uh, you know, being able to take advantage of the expertise that we have among our alumni is, is really important. So, you know, stay engaged with us. I, there's, there's such a growing continuum of opportunities to, to connect and, and, uh, and give back in, in big and small ways. So, um, and, and just even coming to this, you know, understanding what we're doing here and then telling our story. And, and I 100% agree about, you know, the more I've been doing these sessions and just connecting with my alma mater, I just become so excited about what's going on and feeling as though I just wish that I 
knew about this when I was in school. And to see the work that you've been doing and continually helping it grow is just inspiring and exciting. And to be honest, something that I haven't just seen at any uh, university or institution. Yeah. So, you know, from, from, from final words from um, Colette, like what drives you to do the work that you do? Oh gosh. Well, I mean, just look at, just look at Cal Minnelli. I mean, the fact that, you know, that we can build things that help propel them and, and provides the opportunity for them to have such a wonderful experience um, in college. I mean, you know, that, that gets me up every morning. Uh, it's funny that you were saying about just do it because last night, you know, I have these four o'clock in the morning thoughts, which, you know, um, probably scare, uh, you know, like what new program is she building now? But I had this whole idea about, okay. So that wing of, of uh, where we have the honors program and, and OCG and, and, you know, if we put sort of professional, uh, professional edge down here, we'll just have a, 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 the word do uh, written in the floor. Um, uh, um, but just really thinking about, um, you know, how we, I, I, you know, I've been at this for 30 years. I've been able to watch students grow um, for 30 years and it's awesome. And you know what, you know, it's funny, my dad used to say, um, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I can confidently say, I've never worked a day in my life. And you have the energy to show it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanna say, I mean, I just wanna say, you know, thank you. And that's really all that we have today. We, if, like we said, if you wanna connect with Colette, she was like, hey, take my information, let's connect. And I just encourage everybody to take advantage of it. So overall, like that's all that we have for today. And I'd like to thank you, Colette. I would like to thank Callum and Nellie for sharing with us the work that they're doing to provide students with hands-on experience for career success. You know, what the U of O is doing in this space, like I said earlier, is like any other. And I'm extremely excited to call myself a duck. Now, for our next event in this speaker series, we'll showcase the tremendous success the Lundquist College and the University of Oregon is seeing in entrepreneurship. So mark your calendars for May 21st. And that's gonna be at noon Pacific time. So please join us and join this conversation. Once again, I just wanna say thank you for taking the time to join the conversation and supporting the work we're doing at the business school. Until next time, my name is AK Ikwakor. Have a good night and go Ducks. <laughs>